I got this bush in my way. Hopefully it doesn't get in the way of my cast. That was about right. Oh, he's got it. Oh, I lost him. What's up, guys? Welcome to a special edition of 302 Fishing. What's so special about it? Well, a couple things. One, there's no Dan. This is my first time solo riding this thing. Um, just had a little time after work. It's 6.30 on May 13th. Uh, May's a special time in Delaware. It's probably the absolute best time to fish here. Uh, you've got the bluegill are up shallow. You've got the black drum in the bay. Chance for a bluefish blitz. The stripers are moving in shad. It's just a phenomenal time to be fishing. And oftentimes, all the bigger, more charismatic things take our attention. So today, I'm out here to do a little bluegill fishing. And the other thing that's special about it, right, is I'm fly fishing. Uh, I don't think you've seen Dan do any fly fishing because he doesn't know how. So uh, let's get it on. We'll see if I can catch some bluegills. And, uh, you know, as Dan used to say in the, uh, in the videos, if you want the gills, we got the skills. Let's make it happen. It's a very sloppy fly box. Um, half of these flies I found in the trees out at White Clay Creek when I was fly fishing out there. Uh, I'm going to go with this little green and black dude and uh, see what happens. Oh, first cast, you see that? <laughs> so these fish are just up in the shallows. It's spawning time. It's it's really just they're up here ready to bite. Nice big bluegill. And back he goes. See how many casts we can go with uh, getting a fish. So as you're fly fishing little flies like this, you just watch your line and you'll see the tip of the fly line start to move when the fish grabs it. You know, or if you're stripping, you'll feel the fish. But you just kind of keep the line out in front of you and you just strip it slowly, keep it moving across the water. And if it hangs up or moves, well, then you know there's a fish. Oh, I missed one there, I saw a little hit. There he is. <laughs> All right, first cast and third cast. That ain't too bad. Another quality bluegill. And again, that fit fly is just a little green chenille body with black hackle and a black tail. I literally found that in a tree at White Clay Creek. Still waters, as you get to the tail of the cast, you can just kind of pick it up and move it with the rod, and boom! <laughs> Sometimes there's one right there at the end. So, three fish for four casts if you're counting. Another quality bluegill. Show you a neat trick. If you're ever out fishing with kids, you get a bluegill. You take it to the kid and you show the kid, right? You're like, oh, look at this fish. You hold the bluegill upside down. A lot of times, They'll, they'll pee. Boop, 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 boop. You just squirt that on the kid, they freak out. It's a great trick. Boop, boop. Back he goes. Good habit is to always carry a, a rag so you can wipe fish slime on it, not on your pants. Your wife will get mad at you if you wipe it on your pants. If you don't have a wife, wiping your hands on a rag now will be good practice for when you do have a wife. I'm gonna walk this way and cast back the other way so we're not looking into the sun the whole time. Uh, as we get over here, I'll have to be a little more careful though, because you know, I've got trees to hit my back, back my back cast. Oh, there it is. See, <laughs> didn't give myself enough room. Snag the tree. Hopefully, I can get my fly down. Otherwise, uh, I guess I'll give it back to the tree gods as it is where I received it. Oh, I see it. Oop. I had it. <laughs> Success. 
I gotta manage this line. You may have to roll cast in here. Roll casting is pretty effective. Um, can't get quite as far as, oops, there he was too. Can't get quite as far as if you were swinging your cast, but it uh, it's effective. It gets it out there. Fish don't care. Nope. Didn't come back for it. <laughs> I know he's there. Didn't gain me much. There he is. Well, he wanted it too. I have to get the pliers out on this one. No, I think I can get it. There we go. Another bluegill. Away she goes. Bluegill fishing, not particularly hard. Um, I usually fish for these with my crappie rod and just you know little little crappie grubs, and uh, you know you just have a real big day. The uh, smaller offering I think will be probably more successful than grubs just because bluegills mouths aren't particularly big oh a little one you can see i wouldn't have caught that fish with the uh with the crappie grub the mouth is a bit small. The fly, perfect size for this guy. And uh, there he is. Back he goes. Trying to remember to hold my rod high enough so that you guys can see it, see what I'm doing here. Um, fly fishing, you tend to hold the rod a little lower than when you're spin fishing or bait casting. Up, oh, there was a strike that I missed. Maybe he'll come back for it. No, no well. Just take a couple steps and do it again. Oop, that one was in the trees. Oop. Got to compensate for the wind there. Ah, oh, I missed him. Nicked the tree on that one. Not quite far enough away from it to avoid it on my back, my back cast. There you go. Oh, little guy. Yeah. I say in fly fishing, if, uh, if it's big enough, that it should be on the reel it'll get there on its own otherwise you just kind of strip the line to to bring the fish in and uh this guy definitely was not big enough to need to be on the reel pretty little fellow though There he is. Hopefully that shows up in the video. You know, you can just see the fly line move just a little bit when he strikes. Oh, that's a nice fat one. Look at that red color. Just a beautiful fish. You can see why they call them bluegills. There's the blue in the gill. Big red breast. Just a beautiful fish. With this fly, there's not really much to it. I'm just, you know, stripping it back. Kind of a medium pace 
Uh, with some streamers you'd strip faster, some other flies you'd fish slower, or even fish with an indicator, which is really just a fly fishing lingo for bobber. Um, it's not much to it, you know. The uh, hardest part about fly fishing is learning the casting stroke and learning that you're you're casting the line, not not the fly. Um, because the fly doesn't weigh anything, right? It's not going to load the rod. You load the rod with the line. I suppose that'd be a better lesson to, to do when I had a second camera so that you could actually see the casting stroke and see the line in the rod, how they interact. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's not really that hard. Um, some instances, you know, it, it, it takes a little more doing. Like you stand out on the pier and you see those guys fly fishing. They're getting probably, you know, one cast to your 10, one cast to your, no, well, five to eight anyway. And uh, I just missed one right there. I was talking and not paying attention. Um, but the other day I was out there on the pier and sure enough, you know, the fly guy was the only one who caught anything. Um, they were down there on the beach fishing. So uh, it definitely at times has its advantages. Um, there was a time in my life where I was a bit of a fly fishing purist. This guy's tail's all messed up. I don't know if a turtle took a bite out of him or somebody cut his tail just to mark him as one they had already caught to see if they were catching the same fish over and over again. Um, but, uh, yeah, looks more like a turtle took a bite out of him. Uh, believe it or not, turtles are pretty uh, fierce predators. They will uh, chase down a fish and take bites. There we go. <laughs> it's like fish palooza here. I have to change up flies just to mix it up. Maybe try and catch a crappie. Um, this guy's tail's torn up too. I don't think it's the same fish. This one's smaller than the last one. Pretty similar tail bite pattern though. Um, they are up on their beds fanning, so that, that could cause damage, but this looks more like clean bites. Um, looks like it's healing a bit. But uh, yeah, that last fish was bigger, but pretty similar. Um, I'm still going with turtle. Last time I was here, I was sending Dan a picture of a fish and I dropped my phone in the water. I bought this $15 waterproof case off Amazon and uh, I did not have high hopes for it. <laughs> But uh, much to my astonishment, after I ran home, got my dip net, came back, fished for my phone, I did recover it, and it was fine. So, uh, yeah, waterproof case. Good investment. This one feels like a better one. Maybe it was down deeper. Whoop. Another beautiful bluegill. I mean, just look at these colors. It's such a pretty fish. And you know, another beautiful thing about bluegills is they're just, they're available to everyone. They're just very accessible, very cooperative. They'll hit just about anything. And uh, spunky, man, they fight really well. But look at those bluegills. Pretty little guy. So while I was filming that last fish, or catching that last fish another one rose right against the shore just ahead of me here so i'm gonna try and catch that one next but i got this bush in my way hopefully it doesn't get in the way of my cast that was about right oh he's got it oh i lost him Let's see if he gets it again There's another one. Oh, this guy might need the pliers. He really wanted it. Nope, came right out. Oop. And down. Yeah, already, I've actually lost count of how many fish I've caught already. Um,
Oh, there's another one. It's like every other cast, if not every cast. Um, the cookie cutters, you know, some are bigger than others, some are smaller than others, but most of them are about this size. Just a pretty spunky little fish. And I've literally been out here for like a half an hour and I mean, I've already caught 12, 15 fish, I don't know. There we go again. It's like every cast. Pretty awesome, really. Oh, this is a chunk. Look how fat that one is. What a monster. Look at the thickness on it. It's just girthy. Insert your, that's what she said below. Um, Probably a gravid fish, big female, um, just pretty as can be. For those of you not science nerds, gravid means laden with eggs, pregnant. Gonna have some babies. Jeez, oh, I threw my I threw my fly in the water <laughs> just to take a step forward and the fish had it already. I promise you I'm, I'm releasing these fish. It's not the same one over and over again. Another pretty gill. Boop, down she goes. Oh, Dan's gonna wish he was out here with me when he sees this footage. He's at home editing video. Oh, grabbed it on the drop. That's like seven casts in a row. Another big chunky one. Oh, that's the biggest one yet. What a hog. What a freaking hog. Just look at that monster. Unlike Dan, I don't carry a scale around, but you know that's that's a three-quarter pushing a pound bluegill. That's a big bluegill. And I mean it's longer than my hand. I'm I'm a big dude. So pretty cool. That big bump on his forehead. Back she goes. So bluegills, you know, they're kind of in tune to things falling out of the sky and landing in the water. Um, that's where they get a lot of their food. And so that's why a couple of them just keyed in on that plop, you know, when the, when the fly falls, they're like, oh, that's food. Another really fun way to fish for these is with the topwater fly, you know, like a grasshopper pattern or something. Um, because again, they really key in on that plop. Here we go. Fat bluegill. You know, I'm kind of glad I'm having this really good day because a lot of people will ask, why fly fish when you could use worms or you could use something else, right? And I mean, honestly, if you had a day like this where you come out and it's just one after another after another, you know, and it's not, you know, I'm not missing a lot of fish. They, they eat this fly and they're hooked it's it's just a beautiful thing and fly fishing has its applications where it's far superior to other means and uh this might just be one of them all right guys i hope you enjoyed that uh i don't know if it really shakes out that way but i feel like i just caught a fish every two minutes for the last hour um pretty remarkable fishing at a great time doing it um so if you haven't fly fished you know give it a try it's it's honestly not that hard to learn and it can be really really effective and i literally i just covered this much shoreline that whole hour just just this little bulkhead right here i mean it's no secret where i'm at 
fish are up shallow, bluegills are up shallow, right in the spawn. Come get some. If you enjoyed that, be sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up. Uh, I'm sure Dan will plant another video in the, in the uh, lower right corner for you. And uh, yeah, keep watching 302 Fish and we'll catch you next time.